Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 17, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. I said the Alpha and Omega, Prince of Peace, oh my kings of kings. You're king, not mine. The great I am, the Jojoira, <laughs> who cares for me, the Holy One, the Holy Father, the Blessed Trinity. We need to come up with a chorus. Give me some rotini. <laughs> Burning me. All right. Need the harmony there. Um, welcome, Ty. <laughs> and as a guest today are uh, Boudreaux. Say a, hello, Boudreaux. And hello, everybody. Red Pirate Hicks. Arr. And a new guest, Carl S. Welcome, Carl. Howdy. Uh, didn't leave anyone out. I don't believe so. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, and it's a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Cool. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there's been a TV t- streaming atheist call-in video no spoilers, TV no spoilers, show? No spoilers, no spoilers. I haven't caught up on the latest <laughs> Rick and Morty yet, but I am excited mm-hmm. to check it out. Really? I love the show. I, I think it's so funny. It's like really, really well-written satire. And like uh, not satire. Really, I love community and I love... <laughs> no, we like, can use satire. Rural. We will yeah, use yeah. satire, I'm sure. But Larry, when video, you interrupt me, I feel like it's rude. I, 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 I just want to put this out. I just really well, love... If you <laughs> weren't going down the wrong, wrong oh, road okay. every time. <laughs> and we'll talk more about how you can watch the video or slash TV show right after the mid-show break. But we've been doing one here in Knoxville for almost 10 years. If you'd like to interrupt us, interrupt, <laughs> interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page. Use the messaging function to send us questions or comments during the show. We record this on Sunday mornings. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So next Sunday, set your timer and uh, be ready to comment or call in. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what's our topic today, Ty? So I actually wanted to throw this out to JW because he had a really interesting thing that I thought would be a really fun thing to talk about today. Actually, a depressing thing to talk about today. <laughs> yeah, we should can. mention that JW just came in, of course, and and Chad did. Chad also yeah. came in. So yeah, welcome, sorry, welcome, I had guys. issues with the, the link there for a second. No, you're good. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I was just, um, it's, I wouldn't call it depressing. I, I hope it's the opposite of depressing. Um, it's just something that's been, been on my mind lately. A lot of questions that we get from uh, religious people um, is like they feel like it, it comes in. It comes into play with all the misconceptions and all the straw manning of the misunderstandings of what atheism really is and what it means to be agnostic and what what our beliefs are and, and just not really understanding us. Um, they. I hear a phrase a lot, and I used it a lot when I was religious. Um, they they accuse us of, of they accuse us of being bankrupt in hope, and um, they uh, you know I, I'm trying to think about the best way to, best way to word this question or present this topic is what what do you guys say when someone asks you like well where do you find meaning in life well what's your well, if you if you don't live forever and you don't have a god to worship or you know there's really no purpose isn't there or or is there um and like i just want to know what you guys what you guys answered to that question would be like what do you do when you're feeling down or when you're feeling stressed where do you where do you go because i think a lot of religious have these misconceptions about non-religious that all we ever do is go to drugs and alcohol <laughs> no i think that's a good point i think a lot yeah. of people do look at atheists and like hey if you don't have a god belief what do you do when the times are hard what do you do when the chips are down and yeah. what kind of thing can you rely on that i have as a religious person my all-powerful being to get you out of a hard situation dread pirate have you ever considered what it's like when you give up the God belief that you no longer have that crutch to rely on anymore and what you can do to compensate for that? 
It's that's a tough one, uh, and certainly it evolves over time. Uh, certainly, in my case, it did. Uh, you know, when people ask me, you know, well, if you don't have a God, what what is how, where is your purpose? Uh, as J.W. was saying, wh- what's your purpose in life? Why do I need one? Mm-hmm. You know, isn't it enough to marvel at the uh, incredible universe as it is, and the relationships I have with the people in my life? Isn't that enough? I mean. I think it is. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to throw this one out to Doubter 5. What do you do when you lose your keys, Doubter 5? Who can you ask, <laughs> right? You, well, We've had a situation little... where you couldn't find your keys before. And it's just like, yeah. I, in my head, I'm like, he, he, the door's locked. We can't get in. What's going on here? Who is he praying to? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, we live in a natural world. And once you get that mindset, you know that there, there's no supernatural being you can go call to. So you get, you get on your horse and you start riding and you look around for things. In other words, you... You do it yourself. Matter of mm-hmm. fact, uh, I, there is no objective purpose. I get this question an awful lot when I set up my Ask an Atheist booth. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the, it's one of the most common questions I have. What's your purpose in life if you don't have God? Well, the thing about it is when somebody is raised in a church and they believe in God all their life and they believe that their purpose in life is to be God, without God, there is no purpose. I, I can understand that. They don't see that. But it's I like to say it's a roll your own thing. Uh, You create your own purpose in life and you create many purposes throughout your life and you can have many purposes at one time. And can you think of anything more important in your life than create a purpose for your life? Right. Uh, And and it doesn't have to be overarching, right? Right. It doesn't have to be. Um, You can, you can like run from one purpose to another. You can fulfill purposes and get the goal uh, move on. One of at one point in my life, um, my purpose was to get a black belt in karate, and I spent what? Eight years doing. You have it. a black belt in karate, and I've known you for six years. I do. And what? Ish, ish in your karate, and then another per, another time, I wanted to learn how to dance. Um, there were. Well, I knew you could dance. Yeah, that's that's I, very obvious. When I went to college, I joined the fencing team. I learned how to fence. <laughs> I'm a fen- uh, sword fighter. You but have a just, lot of. Th- oh, there, have a lot of purposes. Also, yeah, raise yours. your family. There's. Mm-hmm. Um, um, be a good spouse there's all kinds of purposes that you can you can assign to yourself why do you need a supernatural purpose sure. well, and and when you do subscribe to a person pur- uh what do you call it, supernatural purpose what you're really doing is abdicating the purposes of your life to your preacher mm-hmm. he now is controls your purposes and that that's just a huge loss in your life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna th- I'm gonna throw this out to carl papa in the top hey carl what do you think about the idea of when I'm down or while I'm feeling down and I'm an atheist, is it harder to cope with that when you don't have a God system to support that with? Uh, I, I'm coming from a position of a little bit of bias here because I've never had a God belief. So I wouldn't oh. know what it feels like to, to use that as what I would consider perhaps a crutch. I don't, I don't mean to sound arrogant about it, but I see, I've always seen that as less um, admirable just because I'm able to be the captain of my own ship and I don't need to rely on this, you know, sort of crutch to get me through life. And I've just found nothing but happiness and pleasure. Of course, we all have our own, our down times and stuff at, at, at times, but just relying on myself is the only way I can see getting through those different things and not appealing to something that, uh, that doesn't, speak to me and has never been there so um and and just for the record with with uh jw's you know assertion about drugs and alcohol and things i've never done a drug in my life you know so i never needed never needed that uh to to be a crutch either so Mm. very cool i've never needed it chad why don't we talk about (laughs) that didn't keep me from using it yeah (laughs) I got. Um, did I speak up and? and no, uh, no, please now continue. Now, now no, I keep, have going. To keep going. Yeah, <laughs> you have to keep going. Sorry, <laughs> I messed up. Well, back to what JW was saying. What do you say to people? I've had that question asked a lot. Um, it, it's usually followed by um, a look on someone's face, like, "Oh my God, what, what, what in the world do you do? What's your meaning in life?" Like they really can't believe that you go on daily without having this assigned set of beliefs and, um, and assigned meaning. I don't really know, like what Dr. Five was saying, you have to, 
you have to find it. You have to create your meaning. We're not born with an inherent meaning. I don't see where we, how we could be. I mean, no more than a rock is. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, we've, we've got to create it. We've got to find it. It's everywhere. You just choose. It's part of the beauty of this. You get to do that. You don't have to be um, told. This is not a dictatorship. Right. I got the, the awakening of that can be can be troublesome though. You know, going yeah, from there you go. Like what Carl was saying, he he never had this, but moving from a state of being told what your meaning is right. to a state of freedom can be shocking, and and yes. it can it can seem very lonely. Mm. And if you build, I guess what Buddhists would call a sangha, you know, a group of a group of people that think like you do, um, you, you're essentially building your support group and you can move through that transition with other people. It's kind of what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna throw the question out to uh, Boudreaux. Uh, Boudreaux, let's pretend Chad won the bagel lottery. He's got a billion jillion bagels now, lifetime supply, will not share them with you. And you're like, but I thought we were friends. He's like, well, you're a, you're a buy your bagel person. I'm part of a new club that just gets bagels and it's sort of like a, you know, I don't want to make this uncomfortable between us. I just don't want to start that kind of relationship between us. Like we're good, but I got the bagels now. So like, if you want a bagel, you can just go buy a bagel, but like, don't make this uncomfortable. And you're like, God, I wish I had my own bagels, right? Like that's you right now. You can't make that prayer. You're, you're an atheist. I'm sorry. God, you don't believe in a God that'll help you with your bagel this, this function. So how do you get over that? He'll chill. How can you mend that kind of relationship? Well, first of all, Chad would never do that to me, ever. <laughs> Chad right. was for, very for quiet during that entire analogy. For, for he was like, record. yeah, I'd probably do that. Oh, but you I have access to all my bagels. <laughs> mm. I, I think uh, as an atheist, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, I think, you know, eating babies, you know, cranking yeah. up Ozzy Osbourne. Mm, I mean, I, yeah. you get through the day. I mean, it's just, you know, yeah, there's nothing so goes better with a bagel than a baby. Ah, huh? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, thought I, the, I thought I was the only one that did that. So I'm glad I had it. No, but, so we're all part of the level. new community. Oh, yes. We're all on the same level as we eat babies. All right. It, 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 it is funny that those are the, the drugs and the alcohol and the mm. Satan worship. Satan, Satan worshiping is the weirdest thing to blame an atheist. Of. Yes. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, 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 did, I did come out of a, of, of a God belief. It wasn't a very strong one, uh, but it, it was always there. And I think, I think maybe that's kind of part of it is, uh, oh, the kitty shows up. Yeah. Uh, I think part of it is you, you, you're kind of conditioned and trained to think there's purpose and meaning because that's kind of what you're told yeah, so, by every preacher in the world. I mean, this right. from the, and your parents when you're young growing up. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like you came up with it yourself. And, and then I think you just start looking for it in, in everything. Like a, a lot of, a lot of folks like to think there's some purpose in evolution when again, there's really, mm -hmm. there's no, it's right. survivability there's no. no there's no like there's nobody steering it it's there's no you know uh, the id thing yeah. intelligent yeah. design yeah yeah, yeah. And, and so and just going back to it I, I i can't find any um comfort in in thinking that there might be i can't find comfort in thinking that either i have no control or that i'm you know going somewhere after after this because uh, you know uh, having that question mark and having that doubt and having that lack of understanding and the misinterpretations and everything just is too stressful for me. So it just seems much easier and much simpler just to say, this is the one life I have to live and I'm going to live it to the fullest and therefore apply all that meaning that you guys have been talking about um, to, towards it. I will throw this one thing out. And I think it, it gets closer to what JW was setting, saying. And it also speaks on what Chad had mentioned, because I feel like he hit it on the head. It, when you are coming from a religious point of view and you fall into a non-religious point of view or like a not a atheist point of view, that transition is what's really, really hard. Because I remember when I had my God beliefs and I was very genuinely Christian, like to the point where I wasn't even watching Powerpuff Girls because they have the devil in it. I was like really hardcore into it. And so when I, when I realized, hey, I'm not a Christian, I'm not non-religious i think i might be an atheist holy crap i'm an atheist like when i when i went through that whole level it was it was a it was terrifying because the freedom component was scary right and 
I didn't know, I, I didn't have, I had muscles that I never really exercised that were all about being self-sustaining and, and self-independent and, and self-reliant that I never really used before. And it took a while for me to realize one, that I had these capabilities and that everything that I was doing that was good in my life was a result of, you know, my, my, the consequences of my own actions and the people who loved me. And I wasn't like a mysterious being who came and saved me from these situations. But also that took time for me to figure out because I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't always know that if I jumped, I would land on solid ground. And that transition was really, really like a big thing. Like freedom is scary as Chad was saying. And um, I, it, now, now I can say, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I can put on my atheist hat and be like, yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. But if I'm in that boat right now, I'd be like, is there solid ground if I get out of this boat? And it turned out that I wasn't even in a boat to begin with. <laughs> like these crutches didn't even exist to begin with. Right. And it was all me. And I just had to realize that. And that made it a lot easier. And I think that's the transition that we need to be aware of. JW what you said right there, man, that oh. is uh, huge. I think as far as creating your own prisons. Yeah. 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 And what I yeah, say memes on the internet all the time about there's no freedom like religion. There's no freedom like Christianity. You don't know the meaning of freedom without Christianity. Yeah. And it's, they're in the gilded cage and, and singing about freedom when they don't even know what it is. Mm. Yeah. And they don't freedom have freedom of thought, much mm. less cho choice. The last thing I think of when I think of religion and Christianity is freedom. It's the exact opposite to me. I, I can't, can't imagine uh, having that burden and that, and that confusion and that doubt. And I just, I hear it from, from specifically former Christians all the time about the doubt that they always had and just sort of trying to discover the meaning in the Bible and things like that. And that is not freedom. You know, freedom yeah. is not having those, those, those uh, being, being handcuffed to those uh, ideas. I, I know there's any freedom. It's freedom from accountability. Oh, yeah. that's good. I like that. I know Larry will follow up immediately after this, but I know Christians who will hear you say that, Carl, and be like, no, no, no. My church helps people, you know, especially in the coronavirus, help make masks. We help with daycare. We help uh, contribute to our societies. We're in um, soup kitchens. We're helping out. And my response to that is you can do all of that without the religious belief. No religion needed, right? Right? Like yep. you, if, if church was just a big community center where people in the community came together once a week and, and, and made, you know, charts on how to help people and sang songs together and just like went out and, and made the community actually better, I have zero problem with that. And a lot of churches yeah. do do that. But it's the other layer that comes with the dogma of it that I, I'm hoping people will shed because they don't need that to have the good stuff. And they aren't one and the same thing. Yeah. Well, something a friend of mine often says at our summits um, is, Ty, exactly what you said. Yes, the, the, the churches organize these things, and he'll turn it around on atheists and say, what are you guys doing? Why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you helping? The thing about it is, it, you look at all these uh, church um, hospitals that have like Methodist and Baptist hospitals and stuff. They're usually just paying like 5% of the expense of the hospital to put their name on it. It's not their hospital. Uh, also, look at any hospital that doesn't have a, a religious name on it. Um, Fort Sanders, um, UT Hospital. Those are secular hospitals. You might as well say they're atheist hospitals because they don't rely on religion to get the stuff done. Yeah. And most hospitals are um, atheist or agnostic, at least in practice. Sure. Right. Because, I mean, why would you even have medicine if there was a God that answered right. prayers? Mm -hmm. And why don't faith healers go to hospitals, especially children's ward and cancer? Million wards. dollar question. Yeah, I mean, they how better to uh, um, praise their God and and show the efficacy of faith than going to a hospital and healing people? Mm -hmm. They don't do that. What kind of venue do they do it in? They do it in a, ch a tent and ask for donations. Mm -hmm. And they usually have people in the crowd through. that they pay to pretend sure. like they're sick. Yeah, it's, it's a show. It's simply yeah. a magic show. Dread Pirate, uh, mm. Atheist, what have you guys done recently? Well, you know, I'm, a, I'm the captain for the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster of British Columbia. So we actually do get out there in the community and uh, try to do good things like uh, pasta fests and sock drives and stuff like that. And just share the message that... Uh, you know, as uh, silly as people think we are, well, 
So are everyone else's ideas about what supernatural beings are running amok out there and, you know, running our destinies. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I get out there. Chad, I'm also going to throw this out at you. Atheists, what have you done? Like, I can put in all these cool things Christians are doing right now. They're, they're, they're filling the airwaves with this incredible music that's always in the key of G. <laughs> you, <laughs> guitar, you can always play it, right? That's pretty good. Uh, Atheist, what have you done for us recently or lately? You know, as an atheist, I don't really... Okay, what, what I do more than anything, I think, is to just try to be that good person and do as much good as I can. And, when, and I wait for the question of which church do you go to? And then I tell them I'm an atheist. Nice. And um, that, I think... Just setting an example of extremely kind, air quotes, good behavior, just trying to be the person that helps the person right next to you as much as you can, um, just doing good. And I know that, that there's some judgment that comes with good. And, and I'm not getting that judgment that good from the Bible either. You know, there's, there's all this should and, uh, you know, should all over yourself if you want, but th there are some things that we should do. Uh, so here we go. Sam Harris wrote a book uh, cool. called the moral landscape. And, yep. um, it's a fantastic place to start at least mm -hmm. start the inquiry. Of, yeah. Don't read the, don't the listen to the audio book. You will fall asleep, but if yeah, you have the chance to read the book, read the book. Yeah. I was driving with that audio book going and I was literally like, okay, we're going to hit play. And then next thing you know, my car's upside down and I'm like, Oh, I was woke up right now. This is not good. This is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad that. tangent, but it's possible. Yeah. Don't listen to Sam Harris <laughs> like, while you're driving. It's not good. <laughs> and the the yeah, more his, landscape is his, a, a real <laughs> thing. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh man, I hope it's he never not a good this. voice for radio. I'm sorry. What, so it's not. It's not a good book to get woke with. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's good. How do we get back on topic? Someone help me out, Carl. Uh, last thoughts on this. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> no pressure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think, uh, you know, the, I think I think what Chad said is is to be a good example for your community is the best way to 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 uplift atheism and to show that you know I think we've mentioned on this or y'all have mentioned it on this show before is just be that neighbor, be the you know just just be be a good member of the community, and then oh by the way, I happen to be atheist at some point, and that you know comes out casually, and they can see all the good deeds that you've done up until then. And then, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, this whole time, this guy that's done tremendous work for the community or uh, in his profession or her profession. And then all of a sudden, this whole time, it turns out that they were an atheist. You know, yeah. I think that speaks uh, volumes more than anything um, and more than anything else you can do. And I know places like the ACA here in Austin, where I live, um, constantly are, are, are doing things that are church-like in the sense that they go down and help but probably more <laughs> church-like than, than the church actually, you know, does, but they go out, go out and help the homeless and they're constantly doing uh, programs to, to, to do good in the community. So it's would, out there. It's out there for sure. I would like to take more of a SC point of view when someone asks me like, what have atheists done lately? Cause it gives the impression that we should base the merit of what people are doing as a determination on who, which group is better. And in my opinion, it's more of like, I think good people do good things. Yeah. And I don't mm -hmm. think good people necessarily have to be religious. And if that's yeah. the case, then it doesn't matter if they're atheists or Christian. Good people can do things regardless of whether they have the God belief or if they don't have the God belief. So the question is, why do they have the God belief? And if it turns out they don't have a good reason to have the God belief, they can still do good things without it, which is the right. point of what the atheists are saying. Yeah. It's, a, really it's a spurious... It's a spurious variable, right? It's a it's something that they use. Oh, that's the first time I heard spurious this year. Go for it. Go yeah. for it. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, well, it just means that it's it's a correlation that's made that's that's not, you know, A does oh. not cause B, and it's actually something else, and that something else is, you know, being good spirited or just having a good, um, you know, moral compass or whatever it is, and it doesn't have to be associated with the, uh, with the God belief. So yeah. I was no, no, speaking, no, no, no. Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. Uh, just one quick point. I was speaking with Jim Helton, who's the leader of the, oh man, what is the name? Atheist Alliance. Uh, it's the tri state area for our uh, tri state free thinkers. Mm -hmm. And also, um, 
uh the big what's the big atheist group that sam harris was president of now nick fish is what's that group called atheists come on american, american atheists american atheists there you go um he's one of the leaders in that group and he told me that you know if there's a day where a bunch of nuns are walking and protesting for uh women's right to to have a choice for abortion or whatever he'll be like hey if we can agree on this i will walk with you yeah. or if there's a bunch of pastors who are like hey we're gay pastors and we think you know gay people should be allowed to get married and we'll, it's like we'll walk with you we're atheists we'll, yeah. we'll we will support each other on this because yeah, there are, there are it's about the common of, cause uh, there are a lot of pastors and preachers that walk along with the gay property when we have it here in knoxville mm -hmm. you know they they think that that's not a valid uh, criticism of a human being is which way they're sexually oriented and they uh, they forego that particular uh dogma to be right. able to support human rights yeah and so yeah why can't we I mean, we, we can do. definitely come together so yeah. it doesn't matter if you're religious or not it's like can we do good things together and right. you might find that the, a lot of the christians who are doing it if you talk to them one-on-one -on -one, they may be actually be a lot of atheists in that group as well sure. and agnostic is including uh -huh. chad what about you yeah well i was just going to mention that i think it's also important when someone asks you a question uh, like that what are you doing as a an x group member or what is your group doing that's almost irrelevant because i think you can ride the coattails all you want accountability has to be paramount here what are you doing i think is a more important question as a human being as a singular autonomous uh creature that that functions entirely on its own i mean i just i don't like the idea of putting people in groups. I think it's dangerous. And it kind of falls apart a little bit in activism though, Chad, because we've talked about this before. You as a single person can, can make a, a vow to do good and, and do good things, but you're not gonna be feeding hungry people in a soup kitchen because of just you. You need, we need to unite into a group, get a bunch of money together and act as, as a group to help people. And I think that's why atheists aren't viewed often as helping people and churches are, they're organized. They've got, they meet once a week. They've got a name. They've got a tax got uh, a free system. Too. They've got tithing. They've got, they have the infrastructure for this. You just being on your own, being a good person is fantastic, but. I agree with that. I don't disagree that, that you can do more with a group. I just don't like the way some people are able to hide within a group. Uh, I see you see it all the time or or that they give up their agency, right? Yeah, yeah and accountability. I mean, mm -hmm. so I, I just I, I refuse to be identified as a group member of yeah. almost anything because I don't want to be held accountable for someone else's poor actions. It's Even more strongly, the main thing. if I'm going to be recognized as a group member, I'd rather it be for something I believe in rather than something that I lack belief in. And mm -hmm. that's what, that's what I'm like, I'd rather be known. But we guys, we're at the bottom of the half hour. Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay, this is WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be back in just a minute for the second half of Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Five, and this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday 17th, uh, May 17th, 2020. Welcome to the second half of the show. Let's take just a minute to talk about the free thought groups that you can join here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville. We're in our 18th year and has over 1,000 members, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Hey. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. They've been around for longer than ASK has and like 23 years, something like that. And you can find them at rationalist.org. They actually have educational meetings and presentations. So that's pretty cool. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Atheist Call-In TV show. We have an Atheist well, Call-In TV show? Wow. Yeah, it could happen. You need <laughs> to been start telling people about it. happening this. for 10 years. Anyway, it's called Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. It's online at YouTube, streaming version. Just go there and search for three words, Freethinkers United Coalition. And remember, you can find their archive of the shows on YouTube where a fan has been posting them. Also, if you're interested in getting involved in this TV or the radio show, just call, I mean, come 
to an Ask Meetup or RET meeting and talk to us about it. You can be our next co-host or guest. And uh, you can find or comment to us on Digital Free Thought Radio, our Facebook page. Leave a comment and we'll get back to you. Uh, on our show today, we have Dread Pirate Higgs, Carl, Arr. Carl S., and J.W. Kennedy, Chad the Impaler, Boudreaux, and our co-host, Tyrone Wells. Uh, Dr. Wells' hey. uh, Ty, uh, was Wombat took me. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All yeah. of those were counting. Yeah. All of those okay. counted. Yeah. Uh, you were saying that we had a question from a, a listener. And yeah, we, like we, have a, that. we have a segment that we're going to be doing a lot more regularly. This one's called, mm -hmm. Where is the Love? Where is the oh. love, the love, the love? Where's, Where's the love? love? Nice. <laughs> Guys, we get feedback from a bunch of different places, our YouTube comments. We get feedback from street r slash street epistemology on Reddit. And then, of course, Facebook, as well as Larry's email, which he'll uh, denote at the end of the show. But if you really want to get in touch with us, comments are good at the bottom of the YouTube channel, as well as um, uh, r slash street epistemology or on my Patreon feed. Um, here is the question. It's from G Gentry nine. He wants to know, Hey, is this show a call in show or is it just a discussion podcast? I thought you had mentioned that this was a call in show. If so, how do I call in? Doubter five. How do we answer that? Uh, well, they'd have to go onto our digital free thought radio, our Facebook page and let us know that they're interested in calling in. And then we will, uh, give them the link to join our Wozo podcast, uh, zoom uh meeting and then they could join us there and, and uh, call in yeah so we're still filling it out right now like this is mm -hmm. still like i think we just switched to zoom recently what i think would be good is um we will eventually most likely broadcast this simultaneously over twitch so we'll give out those twitch information when we're mm -hmm. on twitch and people can just comment live right if people want to call into the show we'll probably broadcast the zoom login channel uh on my patreon account mm -hmm. and people can come in through that but we'll figure out a way for people who want to talk and, and give us questions live and join the conversation to join in the conversation. But for right now, please bear with us. We're still getting all the technology sorted out. Right. Yeah. Anyway, how about we get back to the main topic? All right. Well, I have a follow-up question to the main topic. Um, what kind of things, um, since we, we don't have religion, what kind of things do we find specifically? Where do we go to to find meaning in life? What specific philosophies do we, do we find comforting and beneficial? What specific coping skills or healthy habits um, that, we work, that would work, we think well, work well for us? And maybe we could um, send suggestions to anyone listening who maybe is in a deconversion process or has, um, who has been out for a while and was wondering what the heck to do with their life. So are you saying like if we meet someone who's maybe recently an atheist, maybe just dropped the religion or maybe never really put a lot of thought into it anyway, and yeah. they don't want to fall into a God belief, what could we recommend as something that we fell into or something that we subscribe to or follow? Yeah, on? in a sense, and some, it can be something personal too. Maybe um, a, a quote that really, you know, that comes to your mind often, um, mm. a philosophy, um, a topic that you do or uh, just a, a song even uh, yeah. like, yeah, or a, or a leisurely activity that works for you. Cool. You know, cool. Could be anything. I, whatever I, I got a, I got a good quote that I, that I've fallen to um, Frederick Nietzsche. Um, who oh, said, that's interesting. Yeah, I know. I know. Right. Uh, so here <laughs> it is. It says, it says, know thyself for all that thou doest and thinkest and desirest is not thyself. Mm. So I fall into yeah, that yeah. one as our go-to. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Carl Papa, what do you got for us? What's your uh, recommendation for the theists that's trying to enhance themselves? Well, I think uh, finding the community that we've been talking about, what I mean is, um, you know, the way I sort of vent out some frustration and things that I is going on in my life is I find other people that are like-minded and not not so much just to be involved in an echo chamber or something like that, but rather, um, that for example, for me, I started practicing street epistemology. I, I found that, um, you know, you're good it, at it, it too. Uh, well, thanks. I, um, you know, found that it, that it's kind of like a, um, a mechanism that I can use to explore a little bit about my own beliefs and things like that. And I just have found that to be an outlet. Um, also watching, you know, regularly watching stuff like the atheist experience every Sunday and, and kind of, 
using that as my church, if you will, and finding that community and just being able to watch and, and just really listen to listen to them speak on things that I agree with is, is huge for my, you know, uh, coping um, mechanisms. Mm. You know, I used to watch the AXP religiously until I got more into SE and I realized like mm -hmm. the approach that's being used on the show, while yes, it's evolving compared to how it was like early on, like I think like, you know, mm -hmm. I think Mike Bosco and his whole team really did a number on Matt because he's much more patient and willing to ask like how'd you get to that conclusion why do you believe that rather than just saying you're an idiot and hanging up the phone right right there's um, a show called talk heathen that uh that that seems to practice um se a lot like, mm. they're very patient also, people. also truth shout wanted, out yeah. yeah truth wanted uh, objectively dan show that is just basically se and that's much mm. more up my alley in terms of watching so there's a lot of channels available for people who need to have that like mental coping that's beyond just the AXP. You got talk heathens. Yeah. You've got Tr Truth Wanda and some of the shows I can't say on radios. <laughs> but yeah, check out their stuff. Uh, literally, you know, the scathing atheist right. to me is one of the funniest. So yeah. check that one out as well. Cool. The Outer Five. Hey, since you're on the on the mic, what do you th suggest as a philosophy that theists who or maybe recent atheists can subscribe to? Well, um, we since like. We do live in a natural world. I agree with Carl. We need community. And that, that does not mean echo chamber because the only thing that we really agree on is just one point, one answer to one question. We're all different. We all have different views on different things. Find community. Uh, and if the core reason that you're getting together with another person is the fact that you believe in a supernatural being that's never been demonstrated, that's not a really good reason. But at the same time, it's still community and we're human mm -hmm. beings or communal members of society find a community uh, there is one saying if it's not long as we're throwing out sayings that have gotten me through a lot of things and whenever i find myself in a situation where i have to do something that i don't really want to do uh it, it has come to me and i don't know where it came from but it says if you can't get out of it get into it Ooh, and that, I like that, that. That lets me take a second breath, go into it, dive into it with a different attitude, and hopefully get get through it okay. I like that a lot. That's really good. I like that. All right, uh, Chad, how about you? Uh, what's a philosophy that you particularly appreciate that you would recommend that someone who's like, "Hey, I'm a new atheist. I don't really know what's out here. What would you recommend that I check out?" I like Stoicism. I think oh, yeah. I think it's Excellent. really really fun to read some of the old stoic books is it I, is I it bad really... to say i i don't like stoicism because i think it's too stoic <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's great okay I, all right yeah. all right that's where now, i'm at right now okay. so that uh i i think stoicism is fun i think it's really neat but i as far as these uh, this kind of core group member that we've groups that members that we have that we're looking at right now i don't know if this is actually the core. I'm not sure who you guys started with, but these are the faces that I see mostly when I, when I hop on. Um, I'm, I'm likely the most, and, and this might be, I might be wrong here, Dredd, uh, kind of, I hate to say I'm spiritual, but I kind of am. There's, there's a part of me that really longs for a weird ethereal connection um, to this existence it's it's not all black and white with me and and i find a lot of uh i find a lot of comfort in things like um, some spiritual teachers that are open to all religions like there's a fellow called muji that i occasionally um watch now he comes from a christian background uh, he studied under hindu uh, practitioners and he's a lot of woo woo to, to most people but there's something very calming. I enjoy listening to him. I agree with much of what he says. So I think there's a place for that. I, I don't, I would hate to push those fellow atheists aside that feel the same way I do, that are longing for a deeper connection. And not to say that, that there are, that, that you guys don't have that. It's just that some of us feel the, the pull well, toward when you Something. think about it, most Eastern religions are atheistic religions. They, Buddhism, uh, Shintoism, Taoism, they don't have a God per se. Right. They're atheistic, but they're very spiritual too. They're philosophical. Yeah. So, so I, I think that's a valid orientation. 
yeah, I think that is like sort of like a mental discipline of reducing your ego so that you can be way more empathetic beyond what most people ever have the opportunity to be. And what you're really connecting with is people on a level that most people are afraid to let themselves be vulnerable to open themselves Mm. up to. I agree. There's, and when you put it in that context, that, that's, that is completely inoffensive to me or any other atheist that I even know of. It's more along the lines of, Hey, my name's Moogie. I I shouldn't use that one. My name is Poogie. (laughs) (laughs) My name is Poogie. I believe in all these empathetic levels. Also, for nineteen ninety nine, <laughs> I can sell yeah. you this water that will make your legs get longer, so you can run. It's like, oh, now you went, you, you went too far. And it's yeah, just there's to take that extra line. You have to watch out for gurus for sure. <laughs> you, you do. You have to watch out for them. They're they're just as corruptible as the rest of us. Right. Right. Um, all goopy. Yeah, and the, if that if I had a quote, it would be, "What you are looking for is where you were looking from." That's. Oh, probably the quote. Man, we got to make a song out of all these lyrics put together. What you are looking for is where you are looking from. It's a Saint Francis of Assisi quote, and it's he put it differently. I'm sure, different language and all. But um, I like that. I don't think about that one thing. (laughs) Cool. Boudreaux, would would you mind if we Boudreaux? You mind telling me a philosophy that you think is really cool? We got like about 15 minutes left in the show. Let's wrap up. Boudreaux. Yeah. What's yeah, I, I, I think aside from, you know, the eating babies thing, um, <laughs> I, I, I think uh, similar to your SE, something that was really important to me when I first started talking about this stuff out loud, you know, I'd been an atheist for a while, but I was pretty quiet about it in the closet. Um, the books and YouTube videos by, by the greats that we talk about, I think are fantastic. The, that's mm. that's kind of like the starter pack um, for me because it really – you you read these books and you say that's what i've been trying to articulate for years and and these brilliant people found a way to do it so i that i think that's really important and that led me and chad to the summit where now we can you know I, I, we can meet with people like similar minds we're not trying to convince people they're wrong or right but we're just we're just trying to talk to them and right. and let them hear pleasant stories from atheists that you know, hey, we're we're not we're not bad people. And we're other people. points of view. Yeah. It, it arms you, the, watching those videos and and doing things like atheist experience and street epistemology arms you with the tools you need to be able to um, verbalize your position better. Yeah. Like you, I went yeah. my whole life pretty much without knowing that I was an atheist, but without really having the tools to describe it to people that aren't. And so that's that I think is is key. And that gave me the confidence to be able to um, describe it much, much easier. Joey, I want to have you get a chance to rein in on this. What would you recommend personally? Well, um, I am getting into the to stoicism. Um, I, and I also am absolutely in love with the waking up at uh, the Sam Harris. I, the, uh, the Sam Harris. Sam Harris. Ah. And meditation know, app. The, his guided meditations, the the thought experiments that go through session by session are just it, it's indescribable. I can't articulate. It's so therapeutic and profound. It's like nothing I've ever experienced. Cool. And when I'm feeling down, if I if I'm stressed or depressed, sometimes I like to watch Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is good, though. Mr. Rogers will tell you how it. Well, how, how to just chill. Yeah, know? Mr. Rogers will tell you how it is, but in a in a in a sober voice. But he does not hold back, and it's really really great in terms of like preschool or like children's education. He's like, no, kids, these are puppets. They aren't real things. Yeah. Look, I'm pushing this trolley, it moves back and forth with these buttons. Let's go talk to some actors. That's a cameraman. All this is fake, guys. All this is fake. We live in imagine. <laughs> we live in reality. There's no such thing as magic. Yeah. Um, Dread Pirate, you wanted to say something. Uh, I just, uh, another quote was, uh, when I lost my faith, I found my reason. Cool. I like that. Um, I would say for me personally. Oh, that's I, great. Wow, that hit me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. You, I, can, I can see the lag. <laughs> but I like working on my car uh, as like my meditative process. The reason why is I love not having faith that my brakes are going to work right? Like I love just knowing my brakes work because I changed my brake fluid or that I need to rotate my tires. And that when I'm in this metal box and as it's careening down the highway, you know, at maybe 10 or 15 miles higher than the posted speed limit sometimes, uh, I, I have taken apart 
this like vehicle and put it together in different places. I put new stuff in and that I've built a confidence with what I am managing on the road. And that if anything happens, I know that I can fix it as well. And it, I didn't know people still drove Pintos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I drive a small car. I like small cars. No, I like small cars. I'm uh, right there with you, Wombat, on the, yeah. on the, on the mechanics. I, yeah. I love garage time, man. And I just find, like find a hobby. Yeah. So yesterday I helped uh, a crew, like a, like two guys in a parking lot replace their, one of their tires that had gone flat. And I was in my back of my head. I was thinking like, if they're like, thank God you here to help us or like, here's our church. I'd be like, no, I'm an atheist, but I never had to say that. So I was just like, I'm glad it was just a thing where I can stop my car, help them out. And then we shake hands and just like move on and go on our own way. But it's, it's a cool thing to just know, that you have the confidence that you're capable of helping yourself in a time of need, because it's the same thing that's analogous to when you have a deadline at work, or if you have a family member that's sick, you can rely on that personal strength that you develop. And you know that you've had the yourself, the challenge and yourself at the outcome, and you made it through it stronger. And I just have a, 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 an appreciation for the fact that the things that I do well are on me because I worked hard to do them. And, and that's the kind of perspective I want to have moving forward. Guys, we got five minutes left. There's a new podcast on the horizon. Carl Papa, Joey, what do you got for us? So we're working on uh, a, a new podcast. We don't have any, we don't have a channel or episodes out yet, but we're still working on it. We're going to call it One Nation Indivisible. And the idea is, of course, that's a part of the Pledge of Allegiance that has gone back to the original version of the Pledge of Allegiance that did not have, does not have under God in between those words. And the idea is, uh, at least my idea, is that we want to draw in an audience that maybe is not so, um, you know, we, we, we're trying to avoid echo chambers. And so, you know, instead of being either on some extreme left or extreme right, um, we, JW and I find ourselves um, in the middle, apolitical, centrist, if you will. And so we're trying to look at political issues and religious issues, issues from the same um, null, you know, zero hypothesis to um, try to understand the truths of, of what's going on in the world. Cool. And in, in doing so, trying to draw in maybe um, a, you know, a crowd that's most, most of the atheist uh, activist crowd is, pretty far left leaning and we want to try to draw in maybe some more people from the right by kind of being in the middle. So that's our idea. Yeah. Nice. yeah. And if you ever like have these kinds of political chats on this show, feel free to post this video on, on your channel as well. More content's good. And we want to support everyone that's having like really good conversations. That's what I'm all about. Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Well, um, I'm on Mind Pirate on YouTube. Uh, Pirate is spelled P-Y-R-A-T-E. And in fact, I just finished uploading last week's uh, Bozo Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on there. So um, I'm going to start posting them there. Nice. Cool. All right. Let's see. We're going to flip a coin. Got it. It is Chad the Impaler. What would you recommend we check out? Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, Boudreaux and I have yet to put any content out. We No, that's not true. There's another well, podcast thing going on. Come on, guys. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so we've started recording some, well, I think at this point we have one uh, podcast recorded. It's just Boudreaux and, and, and me sitting there. Best buds. Talking about stuff and things as I sit <laughs> in a hotel in Chicago a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. Trump International. What a fun nice. place to be. Nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're going to, we're going to try to get some guests together. Uh, we don't have a name for it, and it's a little more free form, I think, than what I suggest Carl and Bourbon Street. Doing. I suggest Bourbon Street because it's, yeah. it's, it's a good it's name. The it's right, right there, there in the logo. Yeah. It's we good. Do that. That's good. And it's like, hey, you know, get some beer or whatever and just chill on the street, whatever. Yeah. 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 Well, All right. Maybe that's it. Bourbon I'm Street epistemology? It. Huh? huh? No, nah, I really <laughs> don't like the word epistemology. I think it's that's just awesome. All right. Yeah. Boudreaux, what do you got? Yeah, I just echo what 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 Chad's saying. But I maybe a, a nice we could probably do a crossover podcast Ooh. where we could get with Carl and JW because I one of the it. things we're trying to do too is to kind of break the mold of of what you know the typical leftist atheist is. We one of our summit guests now has has actually come out as as a gay Republican atheist, and that's a really interesting Venn diagram of of yeah. beliefs. I think. That so people are out there. There are you know there, 
they're right wing uh, atheists. You know, my dad uh, among them. So, does it speak exist. to the fact that I spent so much time at political conventions doing SC that that doesn't surprise me as much anymore? Like I've spoken to drag queen, <laughs> gay Republican atheists before. <laughs> it's like that's just normal for me now. It's yeah, so weird. It's so weird. My life has. Completely it's amazing that there are, there, are, there are people out there. Yeah. That, uh, are politically have politically free thought you know yeah they draw their own conclusions and they don't choose they, they don't like you don't have to be liberal if you're gay you don't have to be conservative if you're straight you know you don't have to um you know you don't have to be liberal if you're an atheist you don't have to be conservative if you're religious Christian, it's, yeah. yep it's a rarity but hopefully it's something that'll catch you on very cool all right that or five where can we find you and can you please close us out well, of course, you can go to digitalfreethought.com, which is where our blog resides. So you can click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and uh, many articles on the subject of atheism, which we cover on this show. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, and we'll answer them on future shows. If you like our podcasts, you can tell your friends that they can find them on YouTube. I mean iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, po- Podcast.com, iHeart, et cetera, et cetera. We're out there. Right. Uh, and as a weekly reminder, I like to tell and remind everybody that it, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And join us again next week, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Say bye, everybody. Bye, Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye, everybody. See See you.